The human body is an incredible masterpiece with its intricate and awe-inspiring anatomical structure. From the solid framework of bones to the mighty muscles, and the intricate network of nerves that transmit signals, everything works in perfect harmony to enable movement. However, if we were to single out one true hero of our body, it would undoubtedly be the circulatory system. Imagine a bustling highway system within you, with tiny yet robust vessels serving as the lifelines, allowing blood to flow and nourish every nook and cranny of your being. Let's talk about some general facts about the circulatory system before jumping in. The circulatory system comprises several key components that work together to ensure the proper flow of blood throughout the body. These components include Heart The heart is the central organ of the circulatory system, responsible for pumping oxygenated blood to the body's tissues and returning deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Next are the blood vessels. Blood vessels form an extensive network that transports blood to and from various parts of the body. There are three main types of blood vessels. Arteries transport oxygenated blood from the heart to tissues, utilizing thick, muscular walls to maintain blood pressure. Veins, on the other hand, carry deoxygenated blood back to the heart and have thinner walls with valves to prevent backward flow. Capillaries are small, thin-walled vessels that connect arteries and veins, enabling the exchange of oxygen, nutrients, and waste products between the blood and surrounding tissues. The third component of the circulatory system is blood. Blood, blood is a fluid connective tissue that circulates throughout the body. It is composed of red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and plasma. Red blood cells transport oxygen, white blood cells defend against pathogens, platelets aid in blood clotting, and plasma carries nutrients, hormones, and waste products. That was just an overview of what the circulatory system of our body comprises of. In this video, we're going to shine a spotlight on these remarkable vessels, specifically focusing on the arteries of the lower limb. These arteries are like mighty rivers, carrying the life-sustaining elixir of blood down towards the lower extremities. One crucial component is the abdominal aorta. The abdominal aorta, the largest artery in the abdomen, it gives rise to a significant branch known as the common iliac artery. As the abdominal aorta reaches the level of the pelvis, it bifurcates into two common iliac arteries, one on each side. These arteries are responsible for supplying blood to the pelvis, gluteal region, and lower extremities through two major branches. The external iliac artery is one of the branches of the common iliac artery. It continues down the lower limb, passing under the inguinal ligament and becoming the femoral artery, which is known to be the main artery of the lower limb. The external iliac artery supplies blood to the muscles and structures of the anterior and medial thigh. The internal iliac artery is the other branch of the common iliac artery. It remains within the pelvis and gives off various branches to supply the pelvic organs, gluteal region, and perineum. Although it does not directly supply the lower limb, it plays a crucial role in maintaining the overall blood supply to the pelvis and the gluteal region, which is somewhat considered to be part of the lower limb. Let me walk you through the arteries of the gluteal region, then I will continue this video by talking about the arteries in the region of thigh, knee, or leg and foot. Let's explore the intricate network of arteries that courses through the captivating gluteal region, ensuring the muscles in this area receive the necessary oxygen and nutrients. 
For that we will use this illustration here, showing the muscles, nerves, and arteries in the gluteal region. If you look here, we encounter the superior gluteal artery, a brave branch emerging from the posterior division of the internal iliac artery. It embarks on a remarkable journey, entering the gluteal region through the greater sciatic foramen, accompanied by the superior gluteal nerve. Once inside, it divides into superficial and deep branches, each with its own mission. The superficial branch directs its attention to the mighty gluteus maximus, nourishing it with life-sustaining resources. Meanwhile, the deep branch takes a more intricate path, dividing further into superior and inferior branches. Next, we encounter the inferior gluteal artery, arising from the anterior division of the internal iliac artery. Like its counterpart, it navigates its way through the greater sciatic foramen, this time accompanied by the inferior gluteal nerve. Once within the gluteal region, it unleashes a multitude of branches, each with its own purpose. Including Muscular and cutaneous branches Axial artery that supplies the sciatic nerve And an articular branch to the hip joint Let's not forget the internal pudendal artery, emerging as a branch of the anterior division of the internal iliac artery. With a brief appearance in the gluteal region, it traverses the greater sciatic foramen, crosses the ischial spine, and swiftly departs through the lesser sciatic foramen, making its way into the ischioanal fossa. Other than these major arteries that we have discussed so far, the gluteal region boasts two extraordinary anastomoses, the trochanteric and cruciate anastomosis. These are two important anastomoses formed between the arteries of gluteal and lower limb arteries that will be discussed in detail in a separate video. A helpful method for memorizing arteries is to create a tree-like figure where different roots represent arterial names. You can make your own simplified version of it like the one I have made. By assigning names to the various branches, this visual representation allows for easier visualization of the relationships between arteries and their branches. It provides a practical way to understand which artery is a branch of another artery, aiding in the memorization process. Now let me tell you about the arteries in the thigh region of the lower limb. Watch our medical videos anytime and anywhere. Download Scotia.com app now.